Our next speaker is Sue Reid. Sue is a lecturer in anatomy and physiotherapy at the University of Newcastle. She completed her research masters on cervicogenic uh, dizziness and is now doing her PhD. So please welcome Sue Reid. The identification of patients with cervicogenic dizziness during recruitment for a randomised controlled trial. Cervicogenic dizziness is dizziness that's um, described as imbalance or disequilibrium and it occurs together with neck pain or stiffness. It's caused by a dysfunction in the upper cervical spine from the occiput down to C3. While conducting this RCT, looking at the treatment of cervicogenic dizziness with manual therapy, it was important that we clearly identified and recruited people that had cervicogenic dizziness. The existence of this problem has been controversial, with some clinicians still doubting that it exists. However, there has been some evidence, um, some studies done by De Jong, he injected local anaesthetic and cortisone into the upper cervical spine and was able to produce dizziness and unsteadiness. We published a, the results of a randomised control trial in 2008 and that showed that manual therapy to the upper cervical spine had a significant and immediate and sustained effect in reducing dizziness, which showed that cervical spine dysfunction was the cause of the dizziness. Cervicogenic dizziness must be distinguished from other forms of dizziness, and to date there is no standard test. Dizziness is a broad term, but it's been grouped into four main types with a possible cause. So the first type is disequilibrium, imbalance or unsteadiness, and this is the type that we've been looking for for our patients with a psycho, psycho, um, the cervical spine cause. The second type is vertigo, and this is where people have a spinning sensation, and this can be caused from a dysfunction in the central nervous system or the vestibular system. The third type is um, a lightheaded, uh, fainting, presyncope type feeling, which often has a cardiovascular cause. And the fourth type is psychogenic dizziness. So we've developed this five-step protocol that we used for recognising people um, with cervicogenic dizziness for, to conduct our randomised control trial. I'll go through this step by step. So firstly, the patient must have dizziness that's described as imbalance, unsteadiness or disequilibrium. Secondly, we need to exclude other types of dizziness such as vertigo because cervicogenic dizziness is not vertigo. Vertigo is rotation, spinning, rocking or whirling and it has its origin in the vestibular system. It is the most common type of dizziness. The most common type of vertigo is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or BPPV. This is caused by debris from the utricle, little calcium carbonate crystals that are displaced usually into the posterior semicircular canal. It causes brief, intense, severe rotational vertigo. The attacks are usually short, less than 30 seconds, but they can last for several minutes. As Julia said, it's precipitated by a change in head position, usually rolling over in bed or getting out of bed. Another one to exclude is vertebrobasilar insufficiency. This is described as vertigo, and if the uh, insufficiency continues, they will then develop other symptoms of brain ischemia, such as drop attacks, diplopia, dysphasia. But this dizziness is rotary, not the poor balance that we see with cervicogenic dizziness. It is rare because the vertebral artery only supplies 20% of the cranial blood supply with 80% still coming from the carotid arteries. If someone is reporting unsteadiness, we need to find out if there's another reason for that. Have they had a stroke, 
spinal cord pathology, cerebellar disease or Parkinson's. The third criteria is that they must have neck symptoms. So they may have neck pain, discomfort, neck stiffness, occipital pain and or headache. There may be a history less often of nausea, earfulness, blurred vision, tinnitus, problems with swallowing, uh, anxiety or TMJ pain. The unsteadiness or poor balance should be exacerbated by cervical movements or positions. The most common position is cervical extension followed by rotation. So in our study, 60% of people got their dizziness when they extended their neck or looked up. So they reported that on changing a light bulb, hanging clothes on the line, getting something off the top shelf in the supermarket, they would lose their balance. Uh, we should ask questions re-aggravating and easing neck positions uh, for pain and unsteadiness. Uh, the onset of the dizziness, did it come on after an injury to the neck, such as a whiplash? And the duration of dizziness helps with our differential diagnosis. The physical examination, um, we looked at cervical range of motion and most of our patients had neck stiffness uh, or restricted range of motion. Uh, we palpated their neck and found uh, stiff or painful neck, uh, joints between the occiput and C3. We looked at their balance with tandem stance, so this is heel to toe stance, to see if they could hold that for 30 seconds. We did the Dix Hall Pike manoeuvre to rule out BPPV, um, which I'll explain in a moment. And the patients all had caloric testing to see if they had any vestibular dysfunction. So the Dix Hall Pike manoeuvre is the test for, for BPPV and the head is turned to 45 degrees and the patient is taken quickly back into the supine head hanging position. If it's positive, um, they will have nystagmus that's torsional, latent, uh, fatigues, so it's less than 60 seconds and it reverses when they sit, the direction reverses when they sit up. So this study is still continuing, but so far we've, um, I've recruited 572 people. 572 people have been screened over the phone. Uh, so these were um, recruited via advertisements in the local paper and press releases, where we asked for people who had dizziness described as imbalance together with a, a painful neck. So of the 572 people, 72% were excluded with phone interview. So this just shows that with careful questioning about the type of dizziness to see if they meet our definition of having neck pain with related, um, related to neck positions or movements, um, we can then work out whether we think they have cervicogenic dizziness. Of the 18% remaining, they were screened by uh, myself, by a physio, and of the 7% were then excluded after having the Dix Hall Pike manoeuvre and palpation of their neck and further careful questioning about the type of dizziness. 7% were excluded when they saw the neurologist, um, so they were for mainly for having migraine and BPPV. Uh, so he um, excluded 40 more. 2% were excluded when they had caloric testing. So that left 69 of these people went through into the intervention phase of the study and were diagnosed to have purely cervicogenic dizziness. The main reasons for exclusion, um, about 37% had rotary vertigo, 16% uh, didn't meet the definition of, of having neck pain with related dizziness. Uh, some had cardiovascular cause, migraines, some withdrew. Um, about 8% had a central cause, 7% had other medical problems, 3% had anxiety or psychogenic dizziness, 2% recovered as they were going through the process, and interestingly, less than 1% 
had possible VBI. So in summary, people with cervicogenic dizziness can be identified with careful questioning and a few physical tests. So they must have dizziness described as poor balance. Uh, we exclude other reasons, causes of dizziness. Um, they have to have a history of neck pain or stiffness and the neck pain or positions should provoke their unsteadiness. And then with physical testing, we palpate their cervical spine and also um, do the Dix Hall Pike manoeuvre. So hopefully these guidelines will help you in your clinical practice to be able to identify people who have cervicogenic dizziness so you can offer them treatment. If you're not sure, I suggest you give the patient a couple of treatments and if they improve, that will reinforce that your suspicion that the cause of their problem was the cervical spine. Thank you. Has anyone any questions for, for Sue? It's very difficult with the lights to see your hands, so if you do have a question, raise your hand up nice and high. I have a question. Don't run away just yet, Sue. I have a question for you. I, I'm interested in, um, in the, 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 the onset of the cervicogenic um, dizziness and whether you found that there was any relationship with um, with trauma, whether there was a definite event okay. when the symptoms tended to start or whether it was more. Right. So there seems to be two main groups of patients that I've seen. With elderly people, uh, it's usually just a slow progression over time as they get um, osteoarthritis and stiffness in their neck. So a lot of these people where I work have worked in the mines and they've had a lot of neck injury over the years. Um, they may have... Um, worked in an occupation like a builder, a plumber, painter, where they've got a lot of osteoarthritis in their neck, so their x-rays show degenerative changes. They're the main group of people that I've seen. If they're young people, they've usually had an injury, so they've had a whiplash or a surfing accident or the garage door come down on their neck. I've had three people with that. So it is um, usually trauma in a younger person. Okay. Thank you.